our next two pitches that we'll be presenting back to back are John and Cozzy. And they are going to be pitching from Blockstar's technology um, in the world of blockchain and smart contracts. And if you're like me, I want to start with the question, what is blockchain? <laughs> um, so I'll hand it over. There you go. This is the clicker. Um, just forward and back. Yeah. I'll pop this on you, Mark. Pop this oh, on you, John. I've got to have my yeah. so a radiation detector, I think. No, hopefully not. Now, I had intended to wander around, but I won't because I need three hands. Um, before I start, before Emily presses the go button, I'd like to say a couple of things. Firstly, I want to thank Helix and Michael and Emily for not only the opportunity of speaking with you, but also uh, for the courage they have in starting to highlight the issues around the construction industry that have emerged over the last 12 months or so, it's not very long, and, uh, and what we intend to do about it. And we're, I'm delighted to, to be here with Cozzy to be able to help. Now, the second thing is um, I've, been, I've been promoted to, to Block Stars. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm an imposter. I'm not a Block Stars person. Uh, but I've got to tell you that Block Stars are, are great friends and colleagues, um, and they're really exciting people to work with. It's just such fun. So thanks, guys. We'll be talking to Cozzy soon. And thirdly, most of what I'm going to tell you is my observations and opinions from. Uh, a long time. So, so, so if you disagree, please, you know, jump onto LinkedIn and tell me I don't know anything. Uh, I'll be delighted because I'd rather know than not know. Thank you. Um, I, I first encountered automation in 1969 uh, with the first attempts to develop automated bills of quantities and of course it was way too early and it failed um, but I've kind of been interested ever since in, in techie sort of stuff, don't know why. Um, for the last 15 years uh, we've really concentrated our business, uh, part of our business on developing productivity uh, software for the construction industry. Um, I have to say the reception has been less than uh, overwhelming. Um, even as late as five years ago, you'd speak to, to people about it and they'd say, eh, well, what's the problem? I'm okay. Huh? Or they'd say, well, but this might give someone else an advantage if I don't want that. You know, that that's the kind of attitude that prevailed until this year. And suddenly we've got a crisis uh, on our hands and everyone is looking for the solution. Um, on top of that, there's this huge interest of the emergence of artificial intelligence and other modern technologies uh, that people are looking at and going, hang on a minute, things are going to change and they're going to change in a hurry. So, you know, we can do thing, two, two things. We can either wait and uh, be swamped or we can ride the wave because it's going to be exciting and a lot of fun. Already, there's significant organisations that are now starting to, to see the problem and understand the problem and are looking for solutions. And that includes the Master Builders and the Australian Constructors Association, really thinking about the issues, governments, um, and of course, people like Helix and ourselves who've been looking at these problems for a long time. Um, we, one thing we do know is that history tells us that change isn't always necessarily progress. In fact, it often isn't progress. In my opinion, we've been sleepwalking towards these problems for probably something like 40 years without really thinking about what was going to happen. Because, you know, you cannot predict the outcome of cultural change. Anyone will tell you that. So where are we? There's no trust between, between contracting parties and worst of all, from, from our perspective, is there's no confidence that we can get it right. And you've only got to look at all the wry smiles lately about the, about the Tassie Stadium to understand what people think about it. Everyone goes, 700,000? I don't think so. 700 million, sorry. I don't think so. Um, we've got to change that. Uh, the difficulty we have is 
our system that we've developed over this period of time, uh, it definitely inhibits progress on construction sites, and we know that. It, it creates a lot more work, a lot more conflict that we really don't need and we don't, don't want. We know from a lot of research that it stifles innovation and technology uptake, and in my opinion, it's basically no longer fit for purpose. We've got to change it. What are the issues we have? Well, look, the problem is our industry, we're not Zara or we're not, we're not Amazon. We're not one big organisation that controls and mines huge amounts of data that's in structured format. Um, so, uh, and, and the problem is, what's happened over the last 40 years is what I say, there's no whole of business framework. What I mean by that is we've given up on things like standard forms of contract. There's no standard process and procedure through the industry. Um, there are very few data standards left and those are there are uh, uh, not in very good condition, I have to say. And these are things we've got to change over time. Um, Oh, on top of that, of course, it's all now deeply embedded in legislation and contract, which makes it even worse and harder to change. So here's the current status as I understand it. Essentially, what, where we've kind of stopped at is, is these project information management systems that are, that are um, run and owned by major contractors mainly. Um, they're essentially an accounting system with a project information management bit clapped on. Look, they've been terrific over the years, but I know that I started marketing CSSP in 1985 in, in Brisbane, and I did that for quite a, quite a while until it was taken over. Um, but so th these were great in their day, but I, I don't think that they are going to continue uh, to have the, 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 predom the dominance that they have uh, at, at this point in time. So what do what we really got to try and achieve? What we've got to do is rebuild trust between the parties. We want transparent, productive, workable processes, and we've got to rebuild confidence, and that's the number one most important thing. We've got to rebuild, conf rebuild confidence with our, our clients that we can, as an industry, and as a group of people, perform on time and on budget. It's got to happen. And we can do that now with new enabling technologies. Who are the leaders in this world at the moment? Ben Flyberg, the guy in the middle, has been researching this stuff for 25 years. He, he really is on top of what happens in projects culturally uh, and in every other respect. That book is very definitely worth reading. Um, people like Martin Paver down here is right over the top of analytics. These are all Englishmen, by the way, unfortunately. He's, uh, he's deeply into analytics. Uh, they're all saying that the construction industry is one of the more difficult things because we can't gather the, the data in, in structured forms. Now, it doesn't have to be totally structured these days because, as we know, there, there's a lot of ways to teach data, um, but there's got to be some structure in it. So, uh, up the top here, our own Australian Constructors Association have also recognised the problem. They have come up with, with some options and some plans to, uh, to, to start to push forward their... their their push is for a fairer industry, and we can all accept that, that is for sure. Um, I thought it was a terrific start. Um, I don't know that, that there's anyone who's actually dug right down at the moment and said, but where are we going to start? What, what is that point at which we've got to start? And that's what we've got to find. Now, what we have been working in this world for quite a long time. Cosy and his team at Blockstar are over there. Once we start to see the convergence of building process automation and blockchain technologies, blockchain applications, we are going to, this is going to absolutely change the landscape completely, and I mean completely. We're currently looking at things like smart contract. Now, it's, it's a little way down the track, but what it's going to do is provide a absolutely seamless automated processes for a construction contract um, and seamless automated payment through the, through the, through the system, that um, will completely do, I'm sorry to tell you, we're going to completely do away with trusts. We're going to be looking ultimately at, uh, at digital currencies, 
probably through the Australian Reserve Bank digital currency platform, those sorts of things that are all coming out now. This is, this is gonna be a big change. What it's gonna do is improve uh, everybody's life. Uh, we're looking at a fair deal tendering system, uh, which is a system that's going to do away with the with the uh, the second chop at uh, second chop of negotiations and all the corruption that that brings. And we know there's plenty of it. This low level corruption corruption that really needs to be weeded out of the industry. Look, we're, we're kind of there. All the tools are there. Some of them a little bit rusty and they need to be sharpened up. Um, but in some respects, there's a few starting points. And the first one for me is understanding the complexity of the interactions. And the internet has really taught us that. The internet t has taught us how complex interactions are and ours, uh, our building interactions are the same. We all think we've got a simple job. It is far from simple. What I want to show you is a little example of the sort of thing I'm talking about. This is how the construction payment system works in Queensland. This, on the appointed day, you know what it is, the one day of the month, the appointed day, this little guy runs out and looks at his building and says, okay, now what have I done this month, right? And then he passes that back to his office and they shoot a payment claim into the contractor's office. And then he does it and he does it and, he, and, and they all do it, all on the same day. And this girl in the office goes, holy hell, what have I got here? So she thinks, well, I know what I'll do. I'll do what I always do. I'm going to flick this to my site manager. So it all goes across to him, and he does the same. He goes and has a look at the job, works out what each one of those 50 guys he thinks should be paid, um, and fires it back to her, which is just terrific. She then does a payment schedule for each one of those person and shoots it off to them, and provided they agree with it and don't want to argue with it, um, ultimately she, she pays them some money, either directly or you do it through a project trust account. And that's how the system works. The number one objective of construction is progress. This guy here is not doing anything about his job at this point in time. He's just worrying about all this stuff. This is how it could happen. See these two guys up here? They're, they're, they're two of the, of the 40, 40 who are gonna put in a payment claim this month. Now what they do is at the end of every day, they take out their mobile phone and they add their progress into a really simple uh, or, or a complicated construction program like this one. I use this, it's, it's, a, it's a terrific little system. Everything can be ultimately worked into this system. So they, they, at the end of the day, that's what they do. On the appointed day, they get paid, just like that. It can all be automated, it's not that hard. We can do this really quickly and they're happy. They get a pay slip, unless they argue about it. They're, they're pretty, pretty excited. This guy up here, he avoids all that extra work. He, he gets the bonus of his uh, of daily progress, so he knows what's going to happen tomorrow. And the boss down here, he's even happier because he gets a daily earned value calculation and he knows where the money's going and whether he's winning or losing money every single day. That's the kind of stuff that is just around the corner, we can do this today. This will say, this in itself will save two and a half percent of the construction costs, two and a half percent. I've got 20 of these, which I can show you. Hi, morning, John. Right, thank you, I knew, I knew, I knew it would be. Here's, here's the nexus that has to be broken. We've got to break the nexus between contract and process and data and knowledge and money. That's what's got to happen. What is going to open the floodgates to change? In my opinion, the very first simple, easy first step is to start thinking about rules-based shared financial data. Owners and clients and governments have need to come to the understanding that this is one of their most valuable assets. They need to own it, value it, use it. It's really important. After that, really, all we have to do is just you know, put our fear away and get into it and do it.